Welcome back. My name is Kit. I'm an enigma. And I'm Steve. And this is Streaming Things, Streaming Fallout, Episode 8. The finale is what's on the docket today. Thank you guys for tuning in to all of our Fallout coverage. Tune in this Friday for our coverage of Episode 8. 8. The Last Jedi of our streaming Star Wars series. Ooh, I can't wait for people to hear that one. Ooh, it's going to be spicy. It is. It always goes well, the it Last does. Jedi discussions it on the does. internet. Yeah, I love it. No doubt. No doubt. And then uh, look no forward to on, on fleek. <laughs> look, on <laughs> fleek. <laughs> look forward to our coverage of The Boys and House of the Dragon Season 2 in June. Mm -hmm. uh, we might even dip our toes, our little piggly wigglies into Acolyte. Who knows? <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. Ooh, boy excited mm. for that one but yeah right now we're gonna stay in the uh, apocalypse on or abouts or near philly put your apocalypse on this that's what <laughs> we're talking about that's right and uh make my cock explode <laughs> that, that was a fallout me. reference that so it's not me. weird that happens to a lot of guys yeah not me most of the time yeah not me though <laughs> we've been enjoying our coverage hopefully you liked our episode monday talking about episodes two through seven uh, and uh, I'm, I guess I'm wanting to know what your overall thoughts are on the show now that the finale, now we've all witnessed the finale. If you're excited for season two, and then we'll do a scene by scene play by play recap of the episode, followed by our rad moments, our top three favorite moments of the episode, and some bobbleheads, maybe some Easter eggs in this final episode that we caught. As far as uh, and then the special, the best uh, performer, mm -hmm. kind of retroactively of the show a little bit maybe. Uh, of of this episode specifically, at least, though. And then that'll be it for our streaming Fallout series. Mr. Jimmy, the Enigma. Mm. Who really cares? Who the yeah. fuck is Jimmy? Yeah. Nobody knows or cares. I haven't figured it out yet, but here we go. What'd you think of the finale? And then in, in that same vein, you know, the show in general. So I, I went into the show, obviously already a fan. Uh, I've been playing the games for, for a long time. Um, and I, and I kind of talked about it a little bit on, on last episode is... I really just fell in love with learning more about the the lore, as I am one of those people that like to skip. Lore uh, is better than data, as Steve yeah, always I, says. I love lore, way better yeah. than data. <laughs> um, I, I, I like learning about the stuff that I probably should honestly already know about. Um, I think the, the characters in the show are really good, uh, two of the three of them. <laughs> um, we can get into that a little bit later. Uh, but I, I think they did a really good job uh, letting people know that aren't necessarily fans of the game or have even heard about it. Uh, my wife being one of them, she liked the, the few episodes that we watched uh, and she knows zero sh about the show or the game. Um, just letting them into the universe and, and, and showing them, you know, what us nerds have been nerding out about for for many eons. Right. Um, Pull back the curtain. What yeah. Are, what are you nerds nerding out about? <laughs> yeah. Let me see. I want to know. Yeah. Let's it lets the. Uh, the bros in to, to our, <laughs> our, our nerd society. Um, and I, I like coming and joining you guys on this show. One, because I don't look at things from a technical side. You guys are a little more uh, adept to seeing things a little bit different than me. I'm, I, I would assume or I, I would compare myself to kind of like the average American watching television, right? Like, is it good or is it bad? Those are really the <laughs> those are the two things that I, I look at uh, when I'm watching a show. But to hear um, you know, some of your guys' insights, whether it's the, you know, technically how it was cut and put together or your take on a certain situation is something that I really enjoy doing. So, uh, I'm glad I could be a part of it. I love the show. I'm really excited for the setup for season two. It was already announced. So that's exciting. Um, and yeah, I, I, I liked it. I was a big fan. What about you, Steve? Uh, I think if you listen to the, the episode on Monday, you probably kind of get the overall impression of what my my feelings are so far with the season. And it doesn't really change after episode eight. I think episode eight does a pretty solid job of wrapping things up. There's actually something I really, really enjoy that happens in, in this episode that we'll get into when we get to the recap. And, and I think that kind of kind of goes with what I said last episode, which is that the best plot thread for me, at least for that, for this entire season has been like the history of vault tech and like how the vaults came to be and yeah. that sort of thing. That's been the most interesting because that's also something we didn't get to see in the game. So right. it's fun that they're exploring um, the, the origin story of the vaults and the, the true purpose behind them, uh, which is something that was always alluded to in the games and hinted at, but it was kind of cool to see it coming together in real life. And, um, the, the mystery of vault 31 is enticing. I liked, I like where that was going, but overall there's something missing in the show. It's hard for me to put down exactly what it is. There's this 
lack, I don't, I don't know. There's this lack of reckoning, fully reckoning the apocalypse, I think with the characters. And, and I guess that makes sense because the characters, you know, the apocalypse is old hat to them, but even like Lucy coming out of the vault for the first time, I feel like there was this lack of like, wow, it's fucked up up here. <laughs> yeah. It's just kind of like, she just kind of rolls with it, which is, which I, in her character is a little okie dokie. Sure. But I think there, there's just something I can't quite put my thumb on it. That's, that's missing from the show that keeps it from me saying like, I really like this show. I'm like, I'll be honest when the last, when the credits rolled on episode eight, I was kind of like, thank God <laughs> I don't have to watch another one. I'm I like, I'm good. Like I'm sold. I'm, I'm, I'm I've had enough with this show. I assume it will be renewed. Yeah. It's already greenlit and, and Bezos will throw money. At anything. I mean, he, I know he's not technically in charge of Amazon anymore, but how much do we really believe he's not pulling the strings? <laughs> right. But I mean, the expanse is a show that makes no money that he just enjoyed. And they, mm-hmm. they paid for what, two more seasons of that just so he could see what happens. Sure. Uh, and rings of power has a, Another season. Yeah. And from what I can tell, that was not a very well received show. Yeah. So I mean, I, we liked it. Amazon part, is but, not a canceller of shows as often as someone like yeah, Netflix. If, if this was a Netflix show, they'd have been like episode two. They'd be like, cut it, trim it out. <laughs> and they're like, does Jeff like it? Keep it. Remo- <laughs> remove it from the for you pages. Uh, <laughs> How cool would that be? <laughs> what? I mean, it would suck to be a piece of shit billionaire that's like not helping people suffering, but at the same time, I could just pay for stuff I want to see. <laughs> That's true. Like you know somebody I mean? should make a movie about this. Here's a, here's a billion dollars. Like live action rated R SpongeBob. <laughs> Is Walton Daddy, Goggins available? Daddy would like to see that next week. Make yeah. it happen. You got three days. <laughs> <laughs> three whole days. Yeah, or he dies. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean that. Yeah. Fallout. Um, Maybe in a couple of years from now, when the, the new season two comes out, I'll probably be a little bit more like, OK, I'm ready to get back into this world, see a little bit uh, of where they go with the series, because I think the way they do end does leave a little bit of enough of breadcrumbs to keep you going, at least for me. And uh, but but as of right now, when the credits roll for uh, episode eight, I was like kind of relieved it was over. If I'm being completely truthfully, 100 on percent honest, being a hundo, being a hundo, you yeah. know, 100. I'm trying to keep it real. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's interesting. I, I, I think that for me, the show got better as it went along. I think episode four, we as we said on Monday, was like the really uh, almost the peak of the show, but also something that really hooked me. Uh, I like the idea of a character like Cooper and that dog roaming the wasteland. That's that swagger, his his tattered overcoat, like everything about that is awesome to me. Um, The evolution of Lucy into becoming a slightly less positive and, you know, more tough and jaded, but also at the same time uh, always keeps that air of relentless positivity. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that that juxtaposed against the wasteland is really funny and and interesting. Um, even Maximus after episode six became a really compelling character to me um, when he was sitting in the robe and enjoying the comforts of the vault and, you know, for feeling secure for the first time in his life. But then Dude, I get it with chagrin. <laughs> they gave me slippers. <laughs> Oysters, you know, you know the popcorn. She's going to come back and make my cock explode. I think at some point, this is nice. You I know? do love that part in that episode when they're carrying her away and he sees her in the window and he's eating the popcorn and he's just like, uh, yeah. Okay. One more bite. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Actually, two more bites. <laughs> um, you know, all that stuff. It, it just worked better. And I think with this finale, they they really stuck the landing. Me personally, I'm so into the idea of uh, a next season and uh, L- L- Cooper. Now that he's kind of softened, and we've learned how the goodness in him and the, how jaded he is, we now know his motivation is that he thinks his wife and daughter could be alive somewhere because mm-hmm. that's in this universe. A lot of these. Uh, vault tech executives, almost all of them went into these tanks or they can still be alive, right? We found yeah. out the origins of Hank. We found out the origins of buds, Betty. Buds, buds, buds. Bud, for some reason, didn't get a tank. He just got a Roomba in his <laughs> yeah, brain. Yeah. Um, That's what the subtitle said. Brain with a Roomba. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> brain on a Roomba. Yep. I was like, oh. Yep. <laughs> um, but ultimately, I, I don't know if the games are like this, but what really sold it for me and I did what I didn't expect or even need from this show is that it became a really biting satire on capitalism. Um, oh, yeah, it's 100% in yeah. the games, yeah. Really, that was super compelling to me. It came, you know, like I said, I didn't expect or need that. You know, it was about as deep as a puddle for most of this runtime of the season, and I was mm-hmm. fine with that. Um, and yet, I'm, I'm, you're talking to one of the world's biggest fans of the show, Reacher. Like, I don't need much. Sometimes a good dad show, uh, effectively <laughs> made and entertaining, is fine. Um, and yet... You know, the whole idea that vault uh, 
found it in their best interest, which doesn't make that much sense. Like I know capitalism is rampantly evil in, in many aspects, but like the idea of like destroying the, the entire world to, to the point where the currency you're making is no longer valid. Doesn't seem like something they would do, but right, like right. I get it's a satire. So like, I, I, I like it. And like, yeah. I was like really sold on it after this episode. And this fucking episode is gas in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if my, my, less enthusiasm towards this show is just a merely a byproduct of the fact that it all dropped at once and we had to marathon through it in like a day. So why and did, a half. I do think you were probably put off and stressed by what we had to do for the oh, pod. Yeah, but yeah. Behind the scenes, it's been a very stressful time for me. So I'm sure like that's like yeah. an incredibly, that's a, probably a very, but that is probably the reason. Binge while I honestly don't know all that shit. I talked, I don't know that this show I don't know that some of the episodes were good enough to get you to that watch. I would have been so hyped for the following week. You know, I probably would have fell off for a few weeks and then binged them anyway, just because up until four, I wasn't like super into the show anyway. So it was mm -hmm. kind of to the show's benefit that I could watch the next one right away. So for me, what's the benefit of dropping a show yeah. like that? Like, do you guys know to them? Well, just, yeah. Why would you drop all eight episodes? They do this quite a bit. Prime does it a lot. Why would you just drop the whole season instead of, Trying oh. to bring viewers back. I think to Chris's point, I know, I know Prime does this thing where they'll they'll um, l release the first three episodes of yeah. the season and then do a week to week. And I think maybe to your point, like maybe they knew like, oh, this show really starts cooking on episode four. So if we drop the three, maybe people were like, oh, these, these are the yeah. three. Oh, I'm out. Maybe. I don't know. It, it, it's, yeah. it was a weird decision because not it, only did they decide out of nowhere to drop it all at once, but then they're like, oh, also, it's a day earlier yeah. than we announced it. Very strange. Yeah. I don't know. I, it almost feels like they lost confidence in it yeah. because that was the same day that the review embargo was supposed to lift, that they decided to drop the whole show. Um, maybe they didn't expect people to like it as much as they do because people love it. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure. It's, it's usually a sign of lack of confidence, you yeah. know, uh, and now sometimes it can bite you in the ass the other way. Like the show Invincible is a great show. Uh, they split up season two into two halves. Um, so weekly and then like a month and a half break and then the other half of season two. And virtually no one was talking about the show on the second half of season yeah. two. It seems to have destroyed the show's momentum that they did that. Yeah. Um, so it, it's a gamble. But in general, when you have a good show, there's nothing like a good water cooler discourse. You know, yeah. HBO has got that strong. Oh, wow. A new show comes out tonight as we record. We're recording this on Sunday. Um, there's a new show on HBO tonight called The Sympathizer starring Robert Downey Jr. Oh, yeah. Looks good. Uh, directed by Park Chan-wook which is my favorite director. Yeah, so. I love him. But HBO has got that like event world yeah. stopping TV. It's the Last whole of box Us, office. House of the Dragon, Game of Thrones, all the way back to the Sopranos. Like you, it's Sunday night. Yeah. Everybody's talking about it on Monday. Succession. Articles picking apart all the Easter eggs and what might happen. The next episode come out all week. And then everyone's by the time you get to the third episode, 25, 30 million people are watching the show. You know what I mean? Yeah. You get to that word of mouth gets time. to. Whereas with a binge show, everybody watches it uh, over the weekend. And by Wednesday, nobody's talking about it anymore. Yeah. You can't get any videos or articles to get clicks or views. So nobody's making content about it. Mm -hmm. Fucking no dorks like us on a podcast are, you know, hey, just rushing right through the coverage. <laughs> That's us. <laughs> you know, it's just not as fun. So I don't know why they would have done it this time because it's not Amazon's model. It's really not. You know, for the most part, they don't do binge stuff. You know, that's yeah. a Netflix thing. But yeah, I, I understand you, you mentioned them normally dropping three and then the rest. That's kind of how they did the boys. And obviously that show is amazing and it picks up. But may, maybe you're, you're probably right. Lack of confidence just with it being a video game adaptation. A lot of those aren't well received. Mm -hmm. with the exception of, of The Last of Us. Um, I think they just weren't weren't ready. Yeah. And that's I mean, we were at South by Southwest when I think the news of the uh, or around the time that they announced that they were going to be dropping everything at once. And that just seemed to be like sort of the, what we were picking up was that there was not confidence of, in the show going into it, yeah. which is why we we're like, do we even cover it? What do we do? Like, we're kind of worried about it. Uh, but I mean, thankfully for them, it does seem like people really do like it and they found their audience and I'm glad it worked out for them. But yeah, yeah it's just a weird time for me specifically to binge <laughs> eight hours of <laughs> the show in like two days yeah me personally i'm for it i was locked in a hotel room last night against That's, your will no <laughs> i wish 
watching the show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You just kind of left that hanging. <laughs> yeah, you, like, just, hanging you, yeah. you weren't relating to why that was relevant. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> just wanted to tell on, yeah. tell on somebody. Right Help now. me. <laughs> I was locked in a hotel room last night. <laughs> Kitten Steve won't let me out of it. So Steve, like, you have to watch. <laughs> Yeah. Jimmy keeps <laughs> swallowing vigorously into the microphone. Oh, <laughs> and every time he does it, it makes me laugh in the middle of Steve talking. <laughs> I'm, Steve, I'm, I'm gulper. Steve's just like, I really miss my mother. It's been. <laughs> 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 I'm, try, I'm trying to lean and he thinks he's being sneaky which is what's making it even funnier <laughs> so mini hoozle i'll just stay i'll just stay thirsty i'm glad you're getting hydrated man. yeah that's the main thing <laughs> that's healthy man yeah. stay healthy but yeah overall i think we're all pretty pretty high on this show and, and but i am shocked at you steve i think it i think your life stresses have uh, brought the show down a bit for you because you're a bigger fan of the games, you know, you do like mm. a, you do like a sci-fi typically. I do like a sci-fi. A sci-fi. Yeah. A sci-fi. Yeah. yeah, it's his favorite genre is sci-fi. Nice. Yeah, I mean, that's probably true. I mean, it'd be interesting, like, when season two comes out, because I'll probably rewatch the show again in preparation for season two, because I'll watch season two. So it'll be interesting to see if I, like, come around on it more when I'm, when my life isn't on fire. You're just bald by then. <laughs> <laughs> I've lost all my hair. What's wrong with that? For no particular reason, I'm wondering. (laughs) Uh, But this episode opens with our boy, Max. It's called The Beginning. That's right. I like that fun. The first episode is the end. This Uh, was the beginning. It's like It's not confusing at all. Wow. (laughs) But it opens with Max uh, in uh, a brotherhood chopper with his fake head, right? (laughs) Being returned home. My note is Maximus sits on top of a washing machine. Because mm-hmm. if, if you see a shot, the way he's bouncing uh, around is very quick and consistent as if he was sitting on top of a running washing machine. Yeah. It's like uh, uh, him and the character in Ready Player One when he sleeps on the washer and dryer to show that he's poor. He's so poor. He's so poor. He sleeps on his washer and dryer. <laughs> uh, he's got the fake head. He re- He's returned to base. Uh, and we we see, uh, I think it's the overseer. I forget what it's called, but he's up there looking Qu- down. Quintus or something? Yeah. You're wearing the, the knight's the red. Yeah, yeah. The cleric. He's wearing the knight's red, right? Immediately called him out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's like, you get that? And you know, they, they find out immediately that it's not in the head and they're just going to shoot him in the back. But Dane is there and they accuse him like, ah, oh, it seems like everyone in your company suffers ill luck. And then, but Dane's there and Dane's like begging for Max's life and admits that they injured themselves. Yeah. None of us called that. I thought that was an interesting. I, I like the that it said without a doubt, Maximus did not do that to Dane. Yeah, and it's just kind of like I just I was just scared of going in the wilderness, yeah. so I just <laughs> maimed myself. Yeah, scribes die horribly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like the balls to do that, dude. Yeah, yeah squires do die a lot. What we we'll just send you another one. We got tons of them. What we didn't see in the first episode is a scene where Dane is in the infirmary, like this was such a bad idea. <laughs> what the fuck was I thinking? Yeah. Holy shit. There's a lot of foot <laughs> wounds in this show. There's yeah. three. Nolan have a foot fetish. Three yeah. severe foot wounds. Yeah, Michael Emerson gets his foot shot off and then grind it into a metal foot. Yeah. Uh, Dane has this happen to them. What's the other one? Oh, uh, Thaddeus. Thaddeus, Thaddeus yeah. gets yep. his, his, his toesy stepped on. Yeah. A lot of Piggly Wigglies mm-hmm. were injured in the making of this oh, production. And, and the, the, the swap of the fingers. Oh, that's not a foot, but... That's like the yeah. foot for your yeah. arms. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's got flanges, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, think, is, we, I don't think we talked about her dead stinky finger the entire we did time. That's, yeah. you, you can always see it like yeah. discolored. And it's, it's really so funny when it pops up in the frame. She forget yeah. about it. Yeah. And when she holds up your hand, like <laughs> it's a dead finger. Yeah. She's like, want to have sex? And it's just sitting there and he's like, mm, not really. No. What's that smell? <laughs> <laughs> but it like works still. Yeah. Ah, my finger supply is running low. Does it? Coop puts it on, right? No, Coop. I said Coop oh, like Coop's, we're bros. Coop, <laughs> Coop has his bitten off and he sews Coop, it back on. Yeah, he carries his own finger around with him and yeah. then sews it back on. But she is given a finger by a uh, snip snip. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I thought for some reason before he harvests on. before he harvests her organs, he gives her a new finger. Yeah, which is interesting. <laughs> this won't hurt a bit. <laughs> My finger supply is running low. Oh, no, no. That's embarrassing. I thought there was a dick in that drawer, to be honest with you. <laughs> really? thought, yeah, there was like... Steve would like, love that. Oh, let me see. <laughs> it, looked like, it looked like a big toe, maybe. But I, when I first saw it, it looked like a ball sack in a, in a dick. I was like, that's not a finger. <laughs> if you just put a dick on her hand, <laughs> yeah. this won't hurt a bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he's... Uh, Dane's begging for Max's life. 
And they ask what happened in the next scene. They, you know, Dane manages to convince them not to spare him. And he also is saying, I'll take you to the real head. I know where it is. You know, mm -hmm. that's important to them. Uh, and we, we, we see the cleric t talking to him privately in the next scene. And he asks what happened to Titus. And he says he died running. He was a real little bitch about it. He was a real Michael Rappaport you, about yeah. it. You didn't tell me that Knight Titus was actually Michael Rappaport. <laughs> yeah. And then he says, From uh, deep the, blue sea? The brotherhood has fallen far. <laughs> <laughs> Power but, is taken, not given. A lesson that you seem to have learned. That's a cold piece. It is. I like how he like kind of respects him for taking the armor. You know, he's yeah. like, that was a real manly move. Yeah. And he's like, we will. Uh, rebuild. That was a real power move. Oh, he power looks around and knows armor that. move. <laughs> 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 yeah. He's like, with me leading the, the fellowship and you as its swords, we will build a new fellowship Let, will you build a home with me and i thought that was really sweet like yeah. oh guy let's go i love i love you max <laughs> I love, can, I, can i call you max <laughs> home is where the max is that's what i say max have you ever thought about how hands are really the feet of your arms <laughs> i think all about it quite a bit <laughs> all the time sir <laughs> anyway yeah, so he wants to start a new brotherhood with whatever the power that's hidden in the doctor's head is. We don't know yet. It's called fusion. Uh, <laughs> I keep calling Lucy Ella throughout my notes. It's goosey. That, that's adorable. Yeah, goosey. Yeah. No, nope, it says goosey right here. <laughs> the goose is loose. I love that in that last episode. Yeah, she says it's Lucy and he like checks his notes. Nope, says goosey. Puts the glasses on. <laughs> nope, definitely goosey. But Lucy shows up to uh, Flame Mother's crib. The Observatory, famous right. landmark in Los Angeles. The, the Los Angeles. Yep. Uh, we cut to Cooper listening to the vault Tech meeting. It's in the past. Uh, and we get to see, oh, shit, Betty. Young Betty? Young Betty yeah. is in there. You know, she's like a secretary of some kind. Whoa, young Betty. And he's basically, he's been, he's been, we didn't talk about this in our uh, mid-season recap at all, but he's been co-opted by the Hollywood Forever crew. Uh, Moldaver, we got we ran into Moldaver, who's somehow alive. It was a huge part mm -hmm. we didn't talk about, and now Betty is somehow still alive. What the fuck is going on, yeah. Steve? You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and he's worried that his wife is up to up to no good, but he's like still holding out hope. So he's listening to their board meeting. Come on, Barb, set them straight. You know, and, and so it's this heartbreaking moment where he's waiting for his wife, who he thinks is a good person, to stop the madness, right? And again, all the impetus of all of this is that. Someone told him there's no dogs allowed in the vault. And he's like, hold the fuck up. <laughs> hold up. You saying I can't bring Roosevelt with me into the vault? No doggos? For, who said? What? Who said? Well, what's funny is how big that thing is. He's got in his ear. <laughs> I so they don't, noticed They it. don't have miniaturized yeah. electronics. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I understand that, but it's just funny. He's like. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that when he does have it in and someone he walks always turns him, he head. always turns his head and like, oh, hey, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> nothing. Nothing over here. Yeah. It's a good little. I don't answer. have a fucking hot dog hanging out of my ear. <laughs> but we flopping around. But in the last episode, we didn't really talk about meeting uh, Bud, who's sort of the guy that uh, runs Voltank and is sort of um, Buds, Buds, uh, his his wife Barb's um, boss. Yeah, but he but he was the former. CEO or uh, not CEO, but like he was involved in, uh, in the military. He was in charge of like the product management for the power armor during the, the Anchorage battle. And Cooper automatically doesn't like that guy because that series of armor has a very specific design flaw that led to the death of a lot of soldiers. Mm -hmm. And when he tells that dude in a previous episode, it's like, ha, huh, well, you know, we're just uh, moving forward with it. You know, he yeah. just kind of brushes it off. But he tells him quickly that he has like this great idea for something called Buds Buds. Because, you know, the problem with capitalism and ideas is ideas that take centuries to manifest, you, your workforce dies. So he's working with a bunch of junior executives to help him foresee his plans or his plans come to fruition. Yeah. He's management. so excited about it. The same managers that might live for the same centuries, maybe. Maybe, maybe that's what his plan is, just right? Just maybe. And we're, it's intercut with uh, Norm's exploration of Vault 31. And there is no Vault 31. It's just an empty area. Uh with we find out buds buds all of the vault tech executives are being kept alive in stasis for centuries and then kind of woken up one at a time to be 
the junior executive, the manager. It's just the yeah. management, you mm -hmm. know, of the vaults. Um, but in there is, I think, Bud, his brain <laughs> on, a on a Roomba. Yeah, the guy who created this <laughs> doesn't even get a Why stasis. He, he's not get frozen it. or not. <laughs> But and he's like really ineffectual, like the whole bit where he's like, "You can't be in here." Initiate protocol fifty three. <laughs> yeah, <so> Hold still. <laughs> yeah, Hold still. <laughs> let me stick you with this. I love that line when he's like, "You won't see anything in there," and he like turns the lights on. Oh shit, he's gonna see everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's goofy, but yeah, everybody. There's the whole bit in, in the past timeline where Barb's idea is that everybody gets to make their own vault, uh, and then we'll wipe the surface clean. Right. Uh, and there's definitely some Easter eggs in this section as far as I, I've never played the games, but I can imagine each of the ideas that they come up with have to be vaults that were they, in the games. They are specific. Vaults. Yeah. yeah. Um, Absolutely. And we also find out that Henry, the guy that's been calling the big fan of Cooper is Hank. Lucy's dad. Lucy's dad, Hank, Hank McLean. McLean. Um And he's very curious. And, and it's such a nice little point that when Hank runs into him and uh, it's, a de-aged Kyle McLaughlin. And he's like, man, I really love when you killed Jorge in your movie. And it's like the scene that Cooper was like, I really don't like the scene. I don't feel like yeah. my character did yeah, it. But, it's a this, great touch. but this dude fucking loves it. And it just kind of, it's a nice little 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 cherry on the, on the whipped cream. Of how different their outlook on life is. Right. And yeah. all of this is intercut with uh, Moldaver, the flame mother, talking to Lucy. You know, you know, you came out not just to look for your dad, but because you were curious about what the outside is. Who, who has Hank in a birdcage? She does. <laughs> a giant birdcage. Which is one of my favorite movies, Hank in a Birdcage. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and, it, you know, it's so heartbreaking to watch Cooper listen to this. At one point, Barb says, we're just going to drop the bomb. That's the only way we can guarantee that this plan comes to fruition, right? Because they've been withholding uh, technology and peace negotiations because it's not good for business. People are less likely to buy vaults if the war doesn't look like it's going to happen. Um, but she says, we'll literally drop the bomb. And that's that's a bomb dropped. Yeah, it's... So are we supposed to believe that the nukes were actually dropped by vault Tech? Well, at, at the very least, they initiated it. Yeah, they like made it happen. Like started the war. Oh, like bomb yeah. somebody first. And they also bomb Shady Sands, right? Yeah. yeah after well, Hank does specifically, yeah. yeah. Yeah, with uh, a, probably a mini nuke. Yeah, that's wild. Did you did you catch the the little moment where all the executives, the you know the Rob Co, the West Tech, the Big MJ guys, they're all arguing, and Barb gets like a little message on her Pip Boy from a shadowy figure that's watching everything from a different room above them. I saw and I saw them cut to that. I that's, thought that was Cooper that she could see was listening or something. No, it's like a, a shadowy figure. Like this is the dude really pulling the strings mm -hmm. behind everybody. I think this is be the big mystery in season two is who that dude is. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, she gets that little message from him. And that's when she kind of pipes up and says, hey, we are such, you know, we're masters of capitalism. We're so successful at it because of the spirit of competition. And that's how she pitches the vaults to them is like, you know, you'll, you'll all invest into the vault system and get your own vault to have these experiments to see who can create we'll, we'll be competing to see who can create the best future and may the best experiment win type yeah. of thing and that's when they're all like oh i would i would like an experiment where all the children are orphaned and yeah. all that stuff yeah <laughs> interesting but yeah the but big baddie bud says you know the future of your humanity comes from one word management uh he also says uh what's the greatest enemy time and then time. Cooper's like, time. I'm guessing it. Yep, I was right. <laughs> well, that's what. Well, he, what, what if he, he cuts him and he was like, <laughs> well, he tells God. him that earlier in a couple episodes before when he first meet Bud meets Bud. He goes on his little time. Was it at the party, oh. the house party he was at, or I think he, I think technically that. does it before that because yeah. at the house party he's sort of like, hey, it's Bud. It was again. on set. Like, right, cool. Yeah. Fuck that guy. <laughs> it was on set when he met him. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And I, and you, and I like Bud's obsession with time. Is is um appropriate because he invents the thing that can let people live, you know, ostensibly forever. So interesting. And we still don't know how Moldaver lasted that long though. Yeah. There's a lot about Moldaver that when the series ends, I have, I still have so many questions about that character. Like if, I think they raise more questions about her in this episode than answer for sure. Mm -hmm. Hopefully they get around to answering that in season two, but it's kind of weird how they chose to end that character. Yeah arc <laughs> with all these questions. I bet in the she air. was probably an old exec that didn't agree. And then they 
Well, wow. even in the past, we see that she doesn't work for vault anymore. Right. And uh, maybe that's not true. Well, she, she had her own company creating, she was trying to create the fusion. Cold fusion, but all the companies that she worked with and got all the supplies oh, to right, create yeah. it were bought out by vault tech. And so yeah. she couldn't really, she was kind of forced out of making her. I assume thing. she found her way into a tank. At some point she would have had to have. Yeah. Cause Henry knew her Hank slash Henry knew her. Mm -hmm. um, well, he could have also met her uh, in the time when his wife Rose left and started a, life in shady sands with her mm -hmm. at some point. True. True. So I did get a little bit of a, if not like a very close friendship, but maybe a slight romantic relationship between. I, I looked at it as, as a, a romantic relationship. TBD. Yeah. <laughs> TBD. TBD. This episode of streaming things is sponsored by better help. What's the first thing you do if you had an extra hour in your day sleep, you would sleep more. more yeah. Okay. Sleep that's more. fair. Some people might go for a run, read an extra book. A lot of us spend our whole lives wishing we had more time. The question is time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is to know what's important to you and make it a priority. That's what therapy can do. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so that you can do more of it. You can learn positive coping skills and how to set boundaries. You can get empowered to be the best version of yourself. You can also nap. You can also just nap. So if you're thinking about starting therapy, if you've never tried it, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapist at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash streaming things today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash streaming things. April is here, the tomb is empty, and it's time to give a special thanks to all of our patrons who keep the lights on at Streaming Things. And I want to give a special shout out to our super patrons for the month of April. Thank you so much to Stanton Valentino, Maddlestat, Bryce Coppin, Susie Callahan, Anthony Corona, Sunshine, Huckleberry Cauliflower, Ashley Hazen, Mike from New Hampshire, Brett X, Emily Scarano, Lil Tickler, Svento7, Jay Scramo, Bluff Pum, A.K. Ashley Ray, Adam Busby, Wendy O'Laughlin, Jason Hawkins, Conrad, Kaylee Sampson, Rabbit Dog in a Barbie Car, Charlie Friday, Alexis Adler, Peaches, Emmy, Haley B, Joe Velez, John Collins, Amanda King, Trisha Bueller, Sun Loving Mortal, Suzanne Rode, Jen Robinson, Kalisha Reeves, Aaron Armstrong, Kevin Strother, Ashley Powers, Stephen the Fifth, Casey McCain, and Enza. Thank you all so much from the bottom of our hearts. And with that, let's get back to the episode. So after all of these bombs are dropped, uh, we cut to Max, who's gearing up to invade uh, the observatory with the Brotherhood and Dane admitting more clearly that they did it themselves and why. And he's like, hey, well, I got a vault we can go live in. People make your cocks explode. There's <laughs> popcorn. They got these deviled eggs and oysters. Yeah. It makes you super horny. And Dane's like, no, no one's ever going to be safe and there is no leaving. Right. And like there's just. No, she likes safe. To, they, they like to protect uh, Max, but, you know, they, they have no real hope or optimism for life getting better either. And they want to squash that in Max immediately. Um, we cut back to more of the story of how Rose figured it out. You know, the, you know, Moldaver tells Lucy the real story of what happened. Her mother, Rose, figured everything out slowly that he wasn't being completely honest. So she went to the yeah. surface, took the kids with her and started a life in Shady Sands. And then Hank was angry and nuked it, killed, yeah. killed 40,000 people and her mother and took the kids back to the vault. Because wasn't Shady Sands like the capital of New Calif the New California Republic? Yeah. It was. Yeah, that's right. And uh, one of my favorite things about this show is this throwaway line between, I think, Max and Lucy early on, where she's telling this memory of she, that she has with her, her mother in, in the vault of the sun. And how it felt so real because her mother was such a nice person. Ah, oh, that's right. And now it's revealed in this moment that that is a memory of when she lived in Shady Sands. Mm -hmm. And that that was the real son. Uh, and I, th I just thought that was such a cool reveal. Do you um, think Norm was a baby when the, they landscaped? Or do you think he was like 25? <laughs> <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell, man. 
Uh, and it's also revealed in this moment that the tech that's in the head and she comes in all angry at first at Moldaver and just throws the head on her breakfast, yeah. which I thought was awesome. Dang, that was a great touch. Uh, <laughs> and even Moldaver kind of smiles and makes like, you sassy bitch. I was going to eat them eggs. Uh, but also like there's a moment where uh, Lucy's like, I tried, I even tried to stuff an old grenade in the neck hole. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to kill everybody. <laughs> Um, but it's cool, but it's revealed that the tech is cold fusion and that that fucking gnarly ghoul that's sitting there is her mother called that immediately as soon as she really? walked in. Yeah. yeah. As soon as she walked in, I was like, that's a crazy ass ghoul. Yeah. That, was, that motherfucker far <laughs> gone. Pet. It's like Michonne from, uh, from the walking oh, dead. They had him on a leash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. She, and she needs, uh, a, a vault tech code to activate the cold fusion. That's why she has Hank in the bird cage trying to suss out the code from him. Dad, give her the code. Mm -hmm. He said no all that time. And then immediately he's like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Which he does. He gives it, you know, he loves his daughter. He just, he thinks he's good. And I like how there's a, you know, this is surface level stuff, but it's still neat. There's a discussion between Cooper and Moldaver in the past, uh, where they're talking about, metaphors to movie making because he's an actor and he's like well i've done enough movies to tell you that all the best villains don't know they're villains uh, mm -hmm. and he's saying that in reference to her but also now you know in, in this moment it actually applies to hank right so it's just yeah. neat um but, and that's true though about movies oh that's very true very true very true uh the brain tells norm <laughs> That he can't go home. Now that you've seen everything, you're not allowed. So he locks him in there. And there's no food. There's occasionally some big bugs. So you might want to get in your dad's tank. Um, which kinda, we don't. I mean, if he actually like does let him get in his dad's tank. It's pretty nice. It's relatively nice. It's a nice brain. <laughs> but, but who's to say he's not going to get in that tank? Like, okay, cool. Let me unplug it. <laughs> gotcha. Bud's, Bud's a bud. Bud's, Bud's a bud. Say what you will about his politics and his management style. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a bud. <laughs> Bud's a bro. <laughs> Um, and then the brotherhood is incoming. They get alerted that there's a brotherhood invasion on its way. Um, and they're like, not everybody in the brotherhood is down for this invasion. One of the squires is like puking into one of those giant oh, yeah. bags. Uh, like, dude, it's like to the side a little bit. It's like D-Day, yeah. but for the, <laughs> yeah. the invasion for the of Normandy. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and one of those dudes gets thrown out yeah. and he lands on the propeller of the other chopper. That is <laughs> wild. So those, um, turrets were wildly more accurate than the one that the the doctor runs into that oh, on the enclave that like <laughs> was like unloading a billion bullets at him at point blank range said, and somehow missed it's an please, and the dog please remain calm and then it, <laughs> <laughs> it just miss everything yeah that's one of the worst parts of the show is yeah. that he just old man jogs away yeah. from that yeah. gatlin gun yeah uh, that's literally 10 feet away <laughs> but hey you know technology not what it used to be right mm -hmm. um it's, it's used to people who I can actually run. That's how it's targeting. Yeah. Off. It couldn't, it couldn't, <laughs> what the hell? Track a shambling old man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, Hank is a, a fascist. You know, that's yeah. another cool thing about the show is like this is a it's a it's a sat, it's a satire of capitalism. But um, the logical c conclusion of late stage capitalism being fascism, you know, in this mind, because you know, he says we're going to create one culture that's the problem lucy there's all these different uh, factions. factions yeah if you just get rid of them and make a mono culture there's nobody's gonna war and he believes that right that's the uh, uh he's a fascist he's like so. if i if i had to choose between a violent world and a peaceful one i'll pick the peaceful one every time and you agree with me your mom stopped being your mother when she took you into that danger mm. cooper shows up uh so there's a bunch of it's a cool fight between the you know flame mothers, we'll call them the flame, <laughs> flame on the resistance <laughs> uh, and the brotherhood. And, you know, some of them are actually taking down the people in the suits, you know, and then I love that moment where Cooper is sitting in the stairwell and whistles at him and he's just all cocksure and tells him, you know, I used to wear one of those suits. There was a flaw in the welding back then. And he's like, let me see if it's still there. And it blows the dude's fucking back out. And it, wow. Whoa. <laughs> and then it's like, yep, still there. <laughs> it's great. Uh, what am, I laughed out loud in that scene because, he, yeah, he shoots the dude. And then they start that, like, lights out gunfight. Yeah. And at one point, like, after the gunfight starts, you hear one of the dudes in the power armor go, it's that fucking ghoul. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think it was? So, are, I imagine they're all just clones of Michael Rappaport inside those. <laughs> fuck, 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 yeah. fuck, fuck, yeah. fuck, shit, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's uh, a couple of funny instances of ADR in that sequence, but uh, Max manages to get away. Um, 
and Hank's still in there begging for Lucy to go with him to the house. Uh, and you know, Lucy tells Max when he walks in that Hank blew up shady sands. And while they're arguing, Hank had put that power armor suit on <laughs> yeah. somehow. Yeah. And I thought that was hilarious. Um, All because she couldn't just tell him like bad, bad guy, bad guy. Yeah. yeah. Bad guy. <laughs> Why? It's your dad. Let's go. I was um, really hoping Maximus, like, I thought for a moment he was going to kill Hank. I thought he was going to, like, just change his whole outlook and become the, the guy. That's my armor yeah. you're wearing. Yeah, and just poof, blow his head off, but didn't happen. No, he slapped <laughs> the shit out of Max yeah. with the armor. Yeah. yeah. Knocks him out. But then Lucy pulls her gat, gets the drop on old dad, and he's like, hey, wait, what? I know you're never going to shoot, right? Uh, but then Cooper shoots Henry, like, in the face, like, he has a cool scar. Grazes his cheek. Yeah. You want another fucking autograph, young yeah. Henry? <laughs> I love that. And then there's another point. callback to uh, Feo Fuerte a Formal. You yeah. know? <laughs> it's, I don't know what that means, but it's cool. Ugly, strong, and dignified. And it's a quote from Stagecoach, a John Wayne Western. Interesting. So <laughs> where is my family, I think, is the big reveal from Cooper in this confrontation with Henry. Because I was never under the impression... Because multiple times throughout this show, and this is why I think they really stuck the landing, Steve, is some of the weirder things kind of really come together in this finale. But there's multiple people that kind of drop hints or make allusions to, wow, you're still alive, Coop, or ghoul, you know, yeah. 200 years. Why you been, you've been sticking it out a while, you know? And it's kind of like, why? Well, someone even asks him that point blank. Like, why are you still living? What is it that you're living for? And, and that's the Drugs. I think that's the sheriff that he killed. Yeah, I love him. Oh, the, no, no, he kills the president of the government. That, oh, that's yeah. right. That guy was eating cysts. I don't know if you guys saw that. Ew. Yeah, but the the can said cysts, so he would eat them and then spit the the, the core the pit out. Yeah, yeah. 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 God, Christ, that dude, man. That actor is is really creepy in almost everything he plays in. I'm not he sure. said, "You need a new publicist." Yeah. I ain't heard nothing it's about like, it. Oh, you're president now? <laughs> Why not? President of the government sounds like some idiocracy yeah. shit. Yeah, I'm president <laughs> of the government, but the government's misspelled on their sign. Yeah, <laughs> so funny. The government's like five people. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So now we know his motivation has been he's looking for his wife and daughter. I presume. I mean, last time we saw his daughter, she was on horseback with him, mm -hmm. but we don't know how things went down from there. Yeah, we know at some point they get divorced because right. he's playing alimony, but we haven't seen them get divorced yet, at least on camera. I assume that'll be a season two thing. Yeah. But yeah, what happened to his his his, his young daughter and wife? Yep. Where is my fucking family? You know. And and how does he survive that? I mean, I understand the radiation, but the, I mean, there was a bomb like within a mile of him, so he would have to get somewhere pretty quick. Maybe a fridge. I mean, he on was on a horse. That is true. <laughs> Maybe That's that right. horse's name was Shadowfax, and he showed us the definition of the word haste. <laughs> That's right. Show, show us the meaning of the word haste. <laughs> that horse just pulls out a dictionary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> looks like, uh, yeah. So that's interesting to me. But, um, I love that. And this is where, like, I'm so excited for season two because he looks at Lucy and, like, there's a different. He's like, you're my bro now. Like, I like you. You're cool. We we both lost fingers. We both got them back. That's spunky of you. Yeah. We've lost family members. Yeah. <laughs> I heal. I don't know how you got your finger back. That's in, it looks really bad, by the way. <laughs> you should probably get that checked. But he like, you know, hey, look, and they're looking out at the, the waistline. He's like, looks like chaos. But there's always somebody behind the wheel. That's who I want to talk to. I, I just think it's cool. The, the dude in the, the upper level, the shady guy. Yeah, yeah baby. Yeah. There you go, Steve. That's the dude behind the wheel. What about Hank just jumping off the, the top of wherever Ooh. they're at? <laughs> and he has like little thrusters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we saw Max do that earlier. Yeah. The thrusters. Uh, but he immediately knew how to work a T60. But yeah. but, he, but uh, Cooper also does the, the classic fallout line. War never changes. Yeah. Is that a fallout line? Oh, it had like it, it happens I, like three times in that episode. Yeah, but, they say it three times in this episode. But like, yeah, that war, war never changes. That's something that like I think it starts like every fallout. Yeah, game. Ron every, Perlman says it. <laughs> yeah, every <laughs> opening it talks about what happened, and then it's like, but we know war, war never changes. Mm. Come on, yeah, that's not a bad catch line. Um, I popped <laughs> hard. <laughs> I popped hard for it. And Lucy shoots her mom and. <laughs> I mean, that's what happened. <laughs> I love the segue. And Lucy shoots him up. 
Because, you, you know, he thinks what? she's pulling a gun on him for I gotta, a second. I got to know, how, I, what's the deal with Lucy's mom? So Lucy's mom, mom has got it going has on. Has got it ghouling on. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, like, obviously she's a ghoul. I assume she's a feral ghoul, or at least, like, not all there. Yeah, she's She's lost way. her humanity. But uh, Mo- somewhat. But I mean, Mole Daver's like, I think she's holding on to hope that she can cure her. I guess, yeah, she's trying to figure out a cure for her, but it's kind of like, ah, man, I love watching her decay <laughs> yeah. and lose her humanity and just real sad. Yeah, there's the heart necklace there. But then uh, I love that, you know, the iconic line from Lucy after she shoots her mom. Okie dokie. She's going to go wander the wasteland with Cooper now. That's awesome. Come on, yeah. I want that show immediately. Go outside, nerd. Touch grass. Touch grass. <laughs> Let's go meet your maker. And then Max wakes up. Lucy? Lucy? And I wonder if it's going to be like a villain turn that he thinks she abandoned him or if he's just going to be worried for her. But either way, he wakes up alone now. Maybe he's maybe he thinks the ghoul kidnapped her. So when they mm. meets up with her, he like tries to kill him. Yeah, he's going to chase the ghoul down. He's already fought the ghoul in the suit and lost. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he uh, sucks. Yeah. Now, now he has a whole brotherhood at his yeah. back. Maybe now yeah, he's he, Night Maximus. He wakes up and um, uh, Dane shows up and was like, you killed Moldaver? Whoa, guys, he killed Moldaver. And they're like, Maximus is the winner. You, Maximus is yeah, the winner. You think he's going to like uh, toe the line and be honest for once. And he, and he never is. He well, just he, he tries to kind of stop Dane. But again, Dane is so pessimistic that they kind of do this on purpose. Like, yeah. this will be good for both of us and definitely good for you. I'm looking out yeah. for you. I'll be your squire. Yeah. Uh, but, but before that, I, we kind of, sk- I skipped over this, but like before that, uh, Moldaver shows back up and activates the cold fusion again and it turns on all the lights in the city. Yeah. Like, yeah. I guess they have it connected to the power grid. It's awesome. Know, t- to what end? And she, she tells Maximus, well, she holds Rose's hand mm. or her, the corpse's hand of Rose says they did it. And then asks Maximus, you know, Hey, what are your, what are your friends at the brotherhood going to do with unlimited power? Is some, something good. Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. I mean, and when it came to last time I've seen that happen, it was with Palpatine and nothing good happened. No. Unlimited power. So they, they talk quite a bit about the enclave. But they don't ever show is is Rose supposed or not Rose, but is Moldaver supposed to be a part of the Enclave? I don't know. We don't know. More like the Offclave, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the game they they are like like the Brotherhood's nemesis. Yeah. Kind of. They have really I think the armor is way cooler, but I was in the Enclave? See, yeah. I was hoping is they wear Tesla armor, mm. which is mm. powered by Tesla's power. I don't fucking know. It's just got like Nikolai a Tesla. Yeah. It's just it's a cyber truck. Yeah. Walking around. <laughs> Bumblebee. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All the lights in the city come on, though. That's cool. I like that scene a lot. But Cooper and the puppy and the lady are all wandering the wasteland together. That's a fire trio. We get to see the Hollywood sign sponsored by Nuka Cola. Yeah. Yeah. It's Last funny. little jab at capitalism there at the end. And the whole thing about, you know, um, Cooper having a sponsor, you know, everybody's got a sponsor, you know, it's just, I love all the critiques of capitalism that came together in this episode. Um, and then we cut to Hank's bitch ass walking <laughs> and oh shit, there's like a big old city. It looks like Seattle. It's like the space needle uh, there. It, it is new Vegas. Oh, yeah. is it really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's what okay. well, I assume it is, but I think a, a, I, that seems to be the consensus online is that yeah. it's supposed to be new Vegas as well, which makes sense because you know, this is, I think, the most in line with the timeline of New Vegas, right? Yeah. And then the the villain of the game, Fallout New Vegas, is one of the CEOs in the scene that we see before. Uh, Mr. House. So it looks like they're going to be tying those worlds together in an upcoming season. Interesting. And that's the end of season one of Fallout of this episode. Everybody, good night. Go home. Bye-bye. It's, it's the end of the beginning. That's true. But cue the Smashing pumpkin song. <laughs> Which one? The end is the beginning is the end. Oh, I was thinking, how does that relate at all? Despite all my rage, I am still just a rat in a cage. <laughs> Not bullet with butterfly wings. Gotcha, gotcha. Any hoozle, this brings us to our rad moments, our favorite three moments of this episode. Jimmy, drop number three upon my chest. <laughs> I'm going to pop it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. The, I I like the the reveal, right? The 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 meeting of the minds uh, with Vault Tech, I think that was a, a great. Um, it, it was it was done really well to to see all the all the people talking about, 
you know, how they're in control and, and seeing the, the people behind the curtain, so to speak. I, I didn't know that um, from from playing the game. I, I uh, obviously assume that that vault Tech is is kind of the, the criminal here, but I didn't know that the, the four or five of them kind of uh, conspired together to create all this mayhem. And, and uh, I really liked uh, kind of that reveal. It, it, it opened my eyes to the show. Awesome. What about you, Mr. Steve? My number three is Norm meeting the buds. Uh, it was just, it was a fun little, I like that conclusion to Norm's backstory of figuring, trying to figure out what's going on in Vault 31. And then you walk in there and, oh, Bud's still alive, but he's a little Roomba. And, uh, you know, everyone's been held in stasis for 200 years and they released them periodically to help shepherd the vaults. Uh, dwellers into the the new age of humanity, the way that Vault Tech wants it to be. Uh, I, I thought that was a very fun reveal, and I'm excited to see where that goes next. What's your number three? Uh, mine's the same, the very same. Uh, didn't expect to care about Norm's storyline anywhere near as much as I do. And the whole Protocol 53, it was very funny. Brain on a Roomba. Dug all that combined with the big reveal that this was, you know. Um, it's kind of the same. It's right in the same scene as, as Jimmy mentioned yeah. too. It's just intercut uh, with a lot of the, information there. Yeah. And I did, I did love that CEO round table. You know, I thought that uh, Walton Goggins played the listening in and the concern and stuff very well. Uh, but ultimately brain on a Roomba sells it for me. We, we knew his <laughs> wife was involved obviously, but we, we didn't know to what manner. We didn't know she was ready to nuke people. Yeah. Yeah. She didn't want the dogs in there. Psh, psh. It's just all, her whole ploy to get rid of their current dog. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she's going. <laughs> it cuts to Walton Gog and say, "Does she not? Does she, does she not like Roosevelt this whole time? Yeah. He's not a good boy. <laughs> Is he not the goodest boy? He's the goodest boy. <laughs> I don't understand." Um, Jimmy, what about your number two? Um, my number two has got to be the the setup, the end, um, setting up the continuation of the series. I love uh, seeing the ghoul and Lucy and dog meet uh, together. Um, setting off into the sunset on their quest. Uh, it's a good start to um, another RPG-esque, you know, um, show. I, I think in setting up New Vegas, uh, it's, it's going to be great. I think it's uh, it's really cool to see them plan uh, the next um, series using things from from other games. So it's a nice little little touch. Steve, my number two is the reveal that Moldaver's friend Ghoul is Rose, Lucy's mom. I think it's it's a very sad sort of end to like this character who didn't who thought her mom was dead, and meanwhile this whole time you know she was betrayed by her dad, the person she's been looking through this whole this whole movie and not only or TV show and not only did he you know facilitate her mom being killed, but he like murdered a whole town just to make sure that you know the 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 rehab the rehabilitation of the earth was done the vault tech way and not the incorrect way yeah it's a very very heartbreaking scene for that character uh this character we didn't even really know rose just seeing just this desiccated corpse like ah, it's, oh, yeah. it's, and but your her necklace is like fused into her neck and everything it's <laughs> like oh that's fucking awful oh jesus uh, it, it's a heartbreaking moment that's my number two we're, we're sim uh, simpatico, my friend. What? Yeah, my number two as well. And I thought, you know, we didn't get to, Ella, Ella Purnell's a, a fantastic actress, but we we haven't given her much to do because of the nature of her character in this show. It's mm -hmm. okie dokie. Uh, even like the most heinous things are kind of like, ugh, I guess I'll cut off the head and yeah. slice the ass jerky. Uh, and in this moment, we get this horrific reveal and we get to see the the tears welling in her eyes, the horror and disappointment at her father. And it's uh, I felt it, even though I didn't know who Rose was and we haven't gotten much emotion from Lucy. It was a tear jerking moment for me when it, it was revealed to be her mother, which I didn't call at all. I was just like, look at that fucking ghoul. Um, <laughs> that's crazy. Ew. At yeah. the dinner table? Ew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a big reveal for me. Jimmy, your favorite moment of the finale coming in hot. I liked the 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 big battle sequence from from beginning mm -hmm. to end. I, I mean, obviously big fan of of the ghoul and, and you touched on it a little bit. Um, just that that whole scene where he's just the baddest of the bad. Uh, he's, hey, I've worn those suits before. I'll just wreck house real quick. Um, it was a, it was a really cool scene to see the the vertebrates coming in. It's uh, interesting he didn't shoot Max in episode two in the chest below right. the plate. 
Yeah. Just the curtain. Yeah, to me, sorry. yeah, I didn't I didn't think about that. But uh, the show would have ended. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey, that storyline which yeah. might have been a good thing. He yeah. didn't have that flashback yet. That's was it true. remote? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's true. Oh man. I forgot. But Steve, your number one favorite moment of the finale. Mine is hopefully not mine again. Oh, I hope it is. I hope I'm <laughs> look, I'm I'm hoping for a we all everybody. We all everybody. Uh my number one favorite moment of the episode is the Vault Tech meeting. Um, where we get to see the true origin story of how the vault and the scientific experiments came to be. It was just all these companies getting together and plotting to use their resources to for their own sickening purposes. But then also that Barb is like, well, we've, we just drop the bomb and guarantee that one of us wins. Like, we'll wipe out all the competition. It'll just be us. And like that, as someone who played the games and I've been a part of like finding all these fucked up vaults and all that stuff, kind of seeing where it all started and how it came together was really, really fun to see. And you put a bunch of people in a dark uh, war room with a circular light above them all and they got their little name plates and they're all talking about you know, how are we going to fuck up the world? You know, that, 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 those kind of scenes are always fun. Vote for Dr. Strangelove in the Patreon poll. Um, yeah, it's true. <laughs> but yeah, that's my number one. Is it, is it, is it yours? It's not. Yes. I mean, it kind of is. Cause like the whole, we did not pop critique of capitalism mm -hmm. is my favorite thing about this show. But, uh, Jimmy's number two, I believe is what it was, but I just love that bit where, um, Cooper goes on that monologue about chaos and somebody being behind the wheel and how he's trying to recruit Lucy. And it's the most kindness we've seen from him. And now our two main characters, well, there's three, but the two that we like are, <laughs> uh, <laughs> are about to go on this adventure together with the fucking, with the doggo, with the goodest with, boy, with dog me betwixt them, the, the goodest boy, EX 404. And honestly, I, I've got a, do, does I've, that dog have a real name? I've, I'm not dog me. Him. No, like the, the actor dog. Oh, oh I'm I don't sure know. it does. Because that's my that's my special dog meat <laughs> as himself. I saw somebody on Twitter <laughs> say that uh, this might be her most controversial. Hear me out of all time. And it was a photo of Cooper as the ghoul. Uh, and I'm like, that's interesting. I dig that as well. Hear me out is like I would. Oh, let me explain oh, why oh, I would okay. fuck them. I was like, um, I'm, I'm waiting. Yeah, I was like waiting <laughs> for the hot take. Yeah, and you guys got to be more chronically online. Come on. Uh, but I, I just lo I love the promise of season two with, yeah. you know, and I'm sure I'll be let down and they'll only hang out for like half of episode one and something will split them apart. But you think she's going to try to fuck him? <laughs> <laughs> doubt it. Yeah. yeah. Just lay in there one night. Yeah. So you want to have, have sex if you want. I don't know his his uh, it'd be no I doubt that but I I I don't think they'll be like adventuring and fighting together for right. long because it'd be way too cool. Probably be a cool like buddy cop movie, you know? Yeah, I think that'd be right. That'd be great. I love being a good Shane Black buddy cop movie. But yeah, that's my number one. I'm just so excited for the promise of season two uh, with that tr with that trio roaming the wasteland. Now it's time for our bobbleheads, our Ooh. Easter eggs that we mm. discovered throughout episode eight that we haven't mentioned yet. I'll leave that to the two video game playing nerds. Oh, well, I'll start off with some surface level stuff. Uh, I cut, we kind of mentioned the war never changes bit. They right. say that a lot, all the different vaults that they mention in the war room scene are actual vaults. You can play in one of the games in one way or another. Uh, Jimmy, what do you have? So I can act number 27 was the overcrowded vault. Uh, that they talked about. They're like, we could just cram a bunch of people into a vault. Um, 51 was where they would pump drugs into the uh, in, into the air system and see how the people would react. 87 um, uh, was was the children one where they would uh, they just put a bunch of children into a vault and take their parents away. <laughs> so uh, it's really cool to see all of them talk about that. Um, Mr. House, we talked a little bit about this. He is the the main antagonist in New Vegas. He's the the CEO of Robco. Um, oh yeah, the Robco guy. And you talked about Robco having their own suits. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What do you got? Uh, so when um, Hank at the very end, he steps over a death claw skull. Yes. Which that death claw is like oh, is the, the thing with the horns. Yeah, that's like the most dangerous thing you can come across in the wasteland like if you're walking around especially like if you're an early leveled character in fallout yeah, and if you toast somehow manage to cross a, a, de a death claw fucking run because those things are mean nasty and strong but yes. so they were actually created by the military 
and yeah. they they escaped after the after the war. So now they're just Roman and they're all radiated and really pissed off. So yeah, they have little skulls. Almost every time you run into one, there's a little skull next to its name, and it's like, don't fuck with this thing. Yeah, that just means it's really outranking. <laughs> yeah, level yeah, you're toast. Yeah, yeah. You ever kill one? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. at the very beginning of Fallout Four, you you get your first power armor, and they they kind of send one at you just to get you used to the mechanics of the game. But uh, very rarely do you come across them. In I mean, more so in end game, but throughout the game, you're not. I mean, you're not taking one on. It's yeah. it's they're really really hard. The game is generally hard harder than I thought. Uh, I recently playing it like. I'm getting wrecked. Maybe I'm just I'm just not as good as I. I, I yeah, you're probably I just trash. Yeah, <laughs> but have you thought about as the kids say, "Get good, getting good"? Yeah, G U D, baby. No, I did. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> Andy said that to me one time, like years ago, and I was like, "What does that mean?" Like, get good. Yeah, and I like fixed his spelling. I was like, "You mean get good?" And he's like, "Never mind, yeah, get good." That was before I started playing like Souls games and stuff. So. Yeah, it's a whole thing. Yeah, uh, we get a, another. Ink spots drop. Um, we three, my echo, my shadow, and me is another the ink spot song, uh, which actually also played in Fallout seventy six over the uh, Appalachia radio. Uh -huh. And the we kind of mentioned it before, but the city that Hank sees is the city of New Vegas. Yeah. And my last one is Hank's Code. One zero one zero nine seven is the release date for the first ever Fallout game. Oh, that's right, October tenth, nineteen ninety seven. Nailed it. Good yeah. catch. Yeah. That was it. I mean, those were the last three that I had too. So we, I mean, we, we picked out a ton of stuff throughout the, these episodes. So, and they're all, they're all over the place. So yeah, there's probably a ton that we missed because oh, for sure. like literally every frame of this show has some sort of bobblehead in it. Kind of. Yeah. So bobble almost, baby, bobble baby, bobble baby. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yaddy, 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 yaddy. Nah, it's different. I know. It's just fun. <laughs> it's just fun to say. Yeah. Especially when you podcast. That's so potty yaddy yaddy. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I also say that when I take a shit. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, but Steve, it's time for our special nominations. Special, of course, is an, uh, uh, an acronym <laughs> that stands for strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. And we are, de we are deciding who had the best performance in this episode that facilitated all those attributes. That's goddamn right. Jimmy, who are you saying is the most specialist? <laughs> of episode eight. The most specialist, uh, I'll give it to to Mr. Walton Goggins. The Gogster? The Gogster. Uh, obviously, the guy carried the show. He's such um, a powerhouse in that anti-hero role. Uh, you see him predominantly in villain roles, but he's just really captivating as an actor. And, and uh, you know it's him, w whether he's covered in hours and hours of makeup. Um, he's just really, really good. Uh, at playing that kind of character. And I loved him in every episode. You just get excited when you see him. Um, you, you, some would say you pop. Mm. Mm. Oh, I, pop, I pop hard. Yeah. <laughs> some would say that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who. <laughs> Is there really anybody to give it to other than Walton Goggins? I actually was going to give it to Ella Purnell. Because this was I the, do love me some Ella. Ella this, for Ella. me, this was the episode. Hey, hey. Thanks, Rihanna. <laughs> uh, this was the episode where I think Ella Purnell really finally got to in the, you know, the goose is loose, as I said. Uh, goosey. Loosey, goosey. Goosey was Lucy. No, I don't like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, this was the episode where, like, Ella Purnell has kind of been all in this, like, aw, shucks, looking around. Yeah. Hasn't had a lot to sink your teeth into, really, but this is the episode that she got to finally be like, oh, this was her episode. Yeah. Whereas Walton Goggins is great, and he carries the show, and I fucking love him, and anytime he's on the screen, I instantly look, lean forward. I'm yeah. much more involved. But, you know... This was her episode to really shine, and I, that's why I'm giving her the special for this particular episode. I, I was really going to fuck with you guys and be like, Maximus. George Lopez. <laughs> yeah, George Lopez. <laughs> Just to see what you guys I mean, would I think say. Maximus, after episode six, is a pretty great character, and there was nothing ever no, Aaron, wrong with Aaron, the uh, actor's performance ever. What's yeah, Aaron Motten, or Moten, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Aaron Motten, he, he's... 
he's a good actor. He's not doing anything wrong. I just don't think the character itself is very interesting. Is he in anything else that I would know of? So he was in Father Stew. He was in Emancipation. I don't think he was as just engaging, you know. And Steve, I think you convinced me. You know, I think Ella Purnell deserves the special award. <gasps> However, I'm stubborn and I'm going to give it to Walton Coggins. Hey, you gave it to Ella Purnell <laughs> in the first episode. So let's flip up. Yeah, I did. Oh, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. I do love Ella Purnell. I think that. The, the, they're the main two. I'm so excited to see them return to these characters in season two. Hopefully we get it, you know, rather quickly. Yeah, I don't know. It oh, might be two years might before we see this. Probably two years, yeah. Bezos is like, make it now. <laughs> Hurry up. I'll yeah. take a double. We got to, uh, let's buy, but I'm going to buy Bethesda games too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, thank you guys for choosing us on this journey of streaming Fallout. Continue our Star Wars series and uh, look forward to streaming The Boys Season 4 and streaming House of the Dragon Season 2 along with us. We're going to start some, uh, you know, pre-coverage coverage, revisiting the first seasons and stuff of both of those shows in May. Until then, we're going to be knocking out the rest of our patron demanded movies. You can go to patreon.com slash streaming things to get some extra bonus content like this month's poll of dark comedies mm -hmm. looking like it's going to be bodies 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 but dr strange love or death of stalin or seven psychopaths could pull ahead all, we need your vote all these movies are wonderful movies that's very true that's very true but that's all the time we've got for right now we love you all very much thank you for tuning in for streaming fallout we've got to go return some videotapes my name is Kit. Uh, your guess is as good as mine and i'm steve and this was streaming things happy streaming